There's a lot of people out there that think they're good at medical coding just because they know a little bit about it. But real knowledge, true expert knowledge, comes from having different experience. In order to master something, you have to take that time and make the effort every single day. So if your goal is improving your skills as a professional medical coder, stick around because I'm going to give you my best tips for how to get better at medical coding. Hey everyone, I'm Victoria. I'm a medical coder, auditor, educator, and content creator. And on my channel, I provide tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you be successful in a medical coding career. If you're a new apprentice coder or you're a student who's just trying to improve your skills, I have lots of different tips that I can give you on how to improve. So my first tip is to take the materials that you have, your textbooks, your medical dictionaries, and utilize those. A lot of us that went through formal training through a school or the AAPC will get textbooks or study guides and different materials, but we tend to only do the cases that were assigned to us by our instructor. So maybe you had an instructor that told you to only do the even cases or only certain cases. So go back through your textbook and start filling in the gaps of some of those maybe case scenarios at the end that you just didn't do because they weren't assigned to you. If you don't have materials or if maybe you learned medical coding five, 10 years ago and now you're trying to get back into it, I would highly recommend the step-by-step -step medical coding books. I will link those in the description below. I also recommend medical terminology and anatomy for coders if you need to brush up on your med term or anatomy. Again, I'll link those in the description if you're interested in picking them up. Some of my viewers say that they've purchased medical dictionaries. If you have a medical dictionary, use that too. So if you're someone who is working actively on a practicode, which we'll talk more about, or you're coding as a new coder, look up those terms in that medical dictionary. If you don't have a medical dictionary, you can use Google. There's also some great features on the internet you can use to figure out how to pronounce those words as well in, in case you need to speak to other healthcare professionals and you want to pronounce the word correctly. Now, if you are someone who is actively working and you're just new to this and trying to get better, more accurate because you don't want to get a bad audit or you want to keep your productivity up, you know, you have to be very careful because you can't just like copy cases and take them home because that would be a violation of the privacy regulations, but you can notate different concepts. So say maybe you're having trouble with catheterizations or calculating lesions. That way, when you're trying to brush up on your off time and you're figuring out, oh, well, where do I wanna focus on for my continuing education units, start to look at the, oh yeah, these are the concepts I'm having trouble with. Let me see if there's some webinars or local chapters having meetings with speakers that are speaking on, on these particular concepts. Now I touched a little bit on Practicode and I actually have an entire video about Practicode. You can check it out here. I'll also link it in the video description. But Practicode is a module of a ton of different medical coding cases that you have to code. It's not multiple choice. They literally just give you all different blocks to input however many ICD, CPT, HCPCS modifiers it has. It can be helpful for some people. It's not a guided thing, so you do get some rationale, but there's not really a lot of feedback that you can get if you disagree with some of those cases. But what a lot of coders don't realize is there are specialty practicode modules. So say you get your first coding job and you're assigned orthopedics and you don't know a lot about orthopedics or you just want to get stronger, you can go on the AAPC website and purchase a specialty bundle of just orthopedic cases to practice on. With those specialty modules, if you're already certified, you can earn CEUs for completing them and they just help you practice using your coding tools and looking up certain terms that you may see more commonly. Speaking of coding tools, one thing that I think will really help you out when you're going through something like a Practicode is having a tool like Find a Code. Find a Code is a super simple web-based application that you can use to help navigate to the correct codes. And it also gives you all kinds of great additional things that you need to code. Like it gives you the NCCI edits so you know what bundles into other codes. There's some great guidance already in Find a Code, coverage determinations even, and you can add your own notes. So if there's certain things that you wanna notate for yourself, you can place those notes within Find a Code. You can go to findacode.com and get a free trial. And if you subscribe, definitely use my code CONTEMPO10 because you will save 10% off your subscription. If you don't have a tool like Find a Code, you might wanna to talk to your boss about purchasing one for you or for other coders in your organization. And that's actually my next tip is to just have that conversation with your boss. Sometimes if you're not getting feedback, you can make up stories in your head or become very anxious going, I don't know if I'm messing all of these up. I've heard nothing. Sometimes no news is good news, but you know, it can be very difficult as a coder because 
Oftentimes when we receive feedback, it can be way after the fact. And it's very hard when you're thinking you're doing something correct 100% of the time, and then someone slaps in a case that you did two months ago out of the thousands of cases that you've coded, and they're like, hey, you really botched this one. And you're like, and it's hard to rationalize to them what the mindset was two months ago. Like maybe you fat fingered something, maybe you read something on the internet, and then having to be put on the spot and go, oh, okay, you know, I don't remember why I did this, or I think I read this, but now I can't find it. You know, that's it, it, it's something that you have to learn how to handle as a coder. I have worked with some systems though in the past that would allow you to put in like a note on a case you were coding, which I found helpful if there was something that I knew was kind of an odd scenario and I wanted to put my, in my rationale in case I would get asked about it later. But yeah, talk to your boss and say like, hey, I want to get better at the coding that I'm doing. Can you suggest if there is a training module out there that the organization has? Uh, is there someone maybe that you could pair up with? Maybe they have someone who used to code this type of specialty in the past and they can say, hey, yeah, if you have questions on complex cases, you can go and ask Jan. Or you can develop a process and say, hey, you know, I have a couple of cases every now and then that I'm just not sure about. What should I do with them? Should I ask you? Uh, should I set them aside? Do you want to have a weekly meeting? Do you want me to disturb you as they come up? Like, what is the expectation? The other person you might want to have conversations with are the providers that you're billing for. If there's problems with their documentation, they're going to need that feedback. So find out if you're the one who needs to provide that feedback, if you have to have a liaison like a supervisor or a coding auditor but if you're frustrated because your provider is continually making the same documentation error that's not getting you to where the code should be then you need to have that conversation or someone needs to have that conversation with the provider oftentimes i've also found that providers love to explain themselves to other people a lot of providers just love to teach or maybe they sometimes just like that ego stroke of proving how smart they are so some providers really like to explain about the different things that they're doing in an OR or how they're treating patients. Now, if you're a certified coder, you're having trouble with your boss, you're having trouble with your providers, uh, another option you could consider is finding a mentor. Alpha Coding Experts actually did a pretty good podcast on this and I will link that below, but finding a mentor can be very difficult. It's not as easy as just going, oh, look, I found this expert and uh, I can you be my mentor? You know, there has to be kind of a give and take relationship there. And a mentor relationship isn't really meant to be a, hey, can you code this for me relationship? It is more about discussing your career goals, some of your struggle areas and navigating through them. And the AAPC does have a mentorship program. So if you're a certified member through the AAPC, you can look into that. Some mentors can maybe help you with career concepts, uh, counseling you on how to handle things in your career. But if you're an OBGYN coder and they code dermatology and that's their specialty, they might not be able to help you necessarily with uh, coding cases. You can also contact your local chapter. Some of the local chapters that the AAPC has, and probably AHIMA as well, might have ideas of people you could reach out to for some mentorship. And be respectful of the mentor's boundaries. Understand that, you know, they have a personal life as well, so they might not be getting back to you within 10 hours, 24 hours, even 48 hours, depending on what else they have going on in their life. The mentorship really might just be a Zoom call every other week or once a month. So if you are an OBGYN coder and you need that OBGYN specialty specific information, you might want to look into something like seminars or conferences. In-person conferences are finally coming back, so you might find them with the medical societies now, with AAPC, AHIMA. There's also independent organizations now that have all kinds of online seminars that you can partake of, especially now in different specialty sectors. In fact, there's actually a search tool within the AAPC website that you can narrow down continuing education units that you're looking for by specialty. So you can find things that you can earn your CEUs targeted towards that specialty. And the last tip is really to set goals surrounding your coding. So when you say you want to get better at medical coding, are you talking about better at one or two particular specialties or just overall all things coding? Because if you want to concentrate on one specialty at a time, then you might be focusing more towards a specialty conference, a specialty training module. But if you want to learn all things, maybe you just need to go back then and refresh everything. Or maybe you need to communicate that with your boss and say, hey, you know, is there any way that periodically I could sit with people in different specialties and spend an hour or two learning what they do 
and phrase it in a way like you're trying to help like oh well if they go out for a hospital leave or out sick or on vacation uh, I can help them cover them because I'll know a little bit at least about what it is that they do. And if you like certain specialties, are you also looking for certifications in them? Because if that's the case, you can also get the certification study guides and study for them to get those additional specialty certifications through the AAPC. Or maybe instead of specialty certifications, you want to be certified through AAPC and AHEMA, like you want to have your CPC and your CCSP. Or maybe you have long-term goals. Maybe in the long run, you want to get into auditing or you want to get into management. And in that case, you might need advanced training or even different training. Maybe you need to learn about lean management and Six Sigma. Maybe you need to learn about your leadership style. If you want to be an auditor, you probably want to get a membership to name it. So really look at your goals, develop a top goal or maybe a top three and start developing a plan of attack towards them. So say, for example, your goal is I want to become an auditor in two years. Maybe focus on what you're doing now, focus on how you can learn more, focus on going to workshops or meetings around auditing and then say, OK, well, a year from now, I'm going to pick up the uh, study materials for that certification and I'm going to start preparing myself for the auditing certification and then set that goal. Two years from today, I'm going to have my CPMA credential. Try making those SMART goals. They're specific, they're measurable, they're attainable, they're realistic, they're time bound. Definitely let me know in the comments below if you're going to try any of these tips or if you have other tips that have helped you become a better medical coder. I would love to hear them. I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, just keep on coding on.